<laughs> okay, guys, I told you about my flat iron being in the car, so it was like way in the back seat, too, so I couldn't get it. I tried to reach my bag, my gym bag. It's in there. <laughs> so we're going to do part three of really a discussion about really like things that make you say like, really? Okay. Like, and this is, um, one less lonely Valentine weekend. Um, I made my dog, um, she won the championship. <laughs> I made her the one less lonely Valentine. She was so cute. She just, she looked at me like, why are you doing this to me? But she likes when I do stuff like she, she went on a little walk yesterday. Oh, you looking out the window? You looking out the window? You just went for a walk and you went for a walk at like two in the morning. <laughs> she's looking like she's a prisoner. You're not a prisoner. I took her to the store last night, so she's just, you're just like pretending that you're a prisoner, huh? Okay, so she's, I took her to the grocery store and she had a good time. Everybody kept up saying it was a nice dog and everything. <laughs> It's fun to take your dog to the grocery store. It's a hassle, but it was fun. <laughs> but I just, I threw, I threw her in the back seat and then I started loading up the groceries and then I was like, just stay, stay. So she listens to me. She's not going to just bolt out like, and I'll catch her anyway. But, um, so like what I was discussing in the last video was like, we never know. We never know how bad our life is until we hear another person's story. You know, because I was, I was donating blood plasma a couple years ago just because somebody told me to do it. They were a single mom like me. And um, and I was like, okay. So, like, I, I started doing it, donating blood plasma. <laughs> but I heard stories, you know, like this one, this one guy here. Oh, no. Don't start. Come here. She has anxiety too. My dog has anxiety. She had anxiety when I got her. Um, so like this one story um, where I was talking to somebody and they were like, oh, this happened to me and that happened to me. And it was a lot of bad stuff. And I was like, wow, I was at the plasma place and this lady had a horrible story as to why she was donating plasma. And I was like, it was a lot of bad stuff that had happened to her. Like, you know, like, she lost her son she lost her husband like just these people died on her and she was just like left all alone like and I was like wow that's terrible I thought I had it bad like and we never know how bad somebody else has it so you know like try to be patient with people because you don't know what they're going through like I have some really good friends that have the same thing I have which is like mental damage um and uh we all we all like we all show it in different ways. Like if we had something really devastating happen to us and I'm going to come back on Santa Clara County. Um, I got two lawsuits here in this town in the fire. Um, I'm suing Sienna Suites and I'm also suing the social security administration, um, Buffalo office. It's the, it's that particular office, you know, and maybe God wanted me to observe what was going on. Just like he sent me to Santa Clara County and you know, God does send his children to other places. Like he does have jobs for us, just like he has jobs for angels. Cause I was at church one day and the pastor was talking about like, when we, when we die, we're not, we're not going to be just angels flying around. You know, we still have jobs to do like whether we inherit the earth or whether we're in heaven and God has to order us to do things. He commands his children that are here on this earth to do things as well. You know, like it wasn't just by accident that I went to Santa Clara County. It wasn't just by accident that I ran into my friend Joey when he was going through the hardest time of his life. It wasn't just by accident like, because God had put him on my heart. And I was like, I go, I wonder what happened to Joey. Like I started looking for him on Facebook, but God had put him on my heart. And then I ran into him at the Dear Don bus terminal. And that's like our little hangout place that we always used to meet up at. And, um, I love that place, <laughs> the Dear Don. And it's like right across the street from the SAP center. They called it the SAP center where I used to work. I was hired. That was my first security job ever. And I was so excited. And it was like 12, 75 an hour or something. And that was good money back in the day. Like a few years back, I was like, wow, I'm almost, I'm almost at $13 an hour. Like that was my first security job ever. 
and it didn't work out there, but, um, that's what the instructor told us. He says it might, there might not be a good fit at someone in some of these places, you know, like you might have, um, you might have like customer service skills more for like convention work, you know, and I did really good at Maloney. I was at Maloney for like, I guess almost like five to seven months. Cause I, it didn't last long cause, um, I wanted to come back to Vegas and I brought my boyfriend with me and we traveled. We had so much fun. You're not going to believe we, um, we drove like from Cali and we took the wrong way. We took the road, we took the wrong turn where you see the whole coast. And it was amazing. I was like, I go, we took, we took, we were supposed to go that way. And then we went this way. We went up all the whole Santa Barbara coast. And I was so happy. I was like, look at all this beach area. Like we just had so much fun. We had my dog Rocky with us who I gave to my dad. He's like a service animal for a dad. <laughs> so we, we were so silly. Um, and we we're both, we both, you know, have mental illness problems and stuff. So we, we were just, me and him used to have fun together. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll end up running into him again, but anyway, we used to have fun together, but it was, he's like, I don't know how old he is now, like in his forties, like maybe 42 or so. I don't know. He was like, I was like two times his age. I was older than him. Like, I don't know. I was like, I don't remember the age difference it was like at least 20 years. But it, it gets, you know, it got worse because they kept getting younger. The guy at my, my selections kept getting younger. And I'm like, I don't even try to go out with younger guys. Like, I really don't. Like, they followed me. My two best friends, one of them followed me out of a Walgreens. I was getting, I was tired, trying to lose weight. So I had just started my weight training. And then I ended up gaining weight, getting with him because he, he was trying to lose weight too. And he followed me all the way to Walgreens and he's like, do you want to ride back to your car on the scooter? Cause he was standing in front of my car and I was like, what's going on? Like, you know? And then he was like, Oh yeah. He was like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stand in front of your car. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, my birthday is in a couple of days. So, um, I'm just trying to like, you know, get back into shape. And he went to the same gym as me. So I was like, Oh, you go to this gym too. So we started talking, you know, it was like just socializing. I'm a social butterfly. So then I go, okay. So he followed me to Walgreens and gave me a ride back on a scooter. <laughs> I was like, okay. But, um, yeah, just, it was fun. You know, like he, I consider Adam still a good friend. Like, I mean, he did, we did it. We had a falling out, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, yeah, it was kind of bad, but I, you know, we patched it up after a while, you know, like I don't, I don't really give up on my friends, like no matter if they're good or bad. I mean, if they're bad, yeah. I mean, I kind of like, can love them from a distance, but I still will let them know, like, I'm not giving up on you because that's just the type of person I am because like, there could be like 10 people and like, I had a bunch of people in my house.